Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome back for another live broadcast on the Facebook group uh, where I share my experience with financial independence since, well, I have reached financial independence a couple of years ago and uh, how I like to invest and how I teach investing via index ETFs. Today, we're going to talk about uh, where are your money leaks. Um, and, and it's basically a framework that I use to see where my money is going and and sort of optimize things so that I can invest more and reach financial independence faster. Basically, build financial security, remove you know unnecessary expenses, um, increase savings, increase how much you invest, and accelerate your journey. So for that, I have prepared a little presentation. Um, um, it starts with the money buckets flow. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. Right, so this is the money bucket flow. And um, let's go through it uh, step by step. <clears throat> so on the very left, you have your income, uh, which, uh, you know, for most of us, income is fairly stable for those of us who are employed. But for those of us who are freelance or self-employed, this can vary a lot. But basically, uh, we need to set priorities, you know, in terms of how we spend. And typically, we would have a section that I call priority spending, which is housing, groceries, transport, entrances. Uh, utilities. So this is really the basics for um, for survival. <laughs> um, and then we add the next uh, the next bucket, which I call uh, expensive debt and uh, anti debt cash buffer. Right. So this is when you have high, you know, expensive debt that you have to pay off. Um, typically, credit cards and personal loans, etc. Um, mortgages normally don't fall into this category unless you have an insanely high interest rates on them. Um, but um, yeah, so the idea is to, once you've covered your basic expenses for survival, then you start paying off your debt as much as you can and try to get rid of it, uh, especially the expensive one. Um, and then, yeah, the, the cheaper debt, some of it you might decide to keep, some of it you might decide to pay off. That depends on you know personal situation and preferences, which I can't really... Um, discussed today because it's really, <laughs> that's a very yeah, a very different conversation and then the next level is to build an emergency fund so once you have covered your basic needs and your expenses then then you have to start building an emergency fund this is the very first step towards investing uh, you need to be protected and so an emergency fund will uh, allow you to survive any kind of um, unexpected event that could cost you money uh, anything from you know high you know expensive medical procedure that wasn't covered by the insurance to uh you know some repairs in the house that were not you know something that were not um expected or even lose losing your job um, and so maybe getting some security but maybe not and so this is uh, this can be between two and four months sometimes six months you know up to 12 months in you know uncertain periods like the one we're living in today um so in this covid19 era um, it's good to have extra safety because the things that are normally safe might not be as safe today. The next level is, uh, or the next bucket would be um, saving for short and medium term expenses. So that includes, you know, trips, hobbies, um, weddings, down payments, schooling, etc. So anything that is less than five and sometimes 10 year in terms of time period, I would call that something that has to be, you know, a different bucket where you save money, you don't invest it because it's risky. You wouldn't want to lose it. And so you, you keep it aside for those expenses that you're seeing coming in the short term. And finally, you put money aside for your pension uh, and uh, or early retirement, <laughs> if that's what you're after, uh, but basically for your investments, right? Um, so this is the money buckets flow. Um, now we're going to take a look at it in more details and think about where are our money leaks, right? So this is a way of optimizing the bucket flow because as you've seen in the previous slide, our investment bucket is empty. <laughs> but I mean, you might be anywhere along this line, right? Maybe you don't have an emergency fund uh, and maybe you can't afford any short, you know, short or medium term expenses and you're living, you know, paycheck by paycheck. But maybe you have enough and you've already been putting money aside and now you're looking to invest. So that means in that case, you know, the, the last bucket would be a bit more full. Um, but this is all very personal anyway. So in any case, no matter the situation you're in, you, there, you probably will want to reduce your money leaks. 
Uh, and so from a visual perspective, this is what it would look like. Um, say in your priority expenses, there are things that yes, you need, but they might be overpriced for whatever reason. You have certain insurances and maybe if you go shopping around, you might find cheap insurances. Maybe you're paying for utilities and maybe if you go shopping around, you might find you know, cheaper for the same service. Um, you might consider you know, moving places if you're willing to take these big structural changes that we talked about yesterday. Um, to basically yeah, uh, free up some more cash and then use that for investing. So basically look at your um, expenses um, you know, in the whole chain and identify the leaks, right? And it could also be uh, subscriptions that you have and you're not using, right? Um, or even if you're using them, you can question whether you actually need them, depending on where you stand here, right? So if you don't have an emergency fund, you really have to focus and try to find those leaks and and, and plug them. <laughs> so this is what we do. Why we try to plug the big leaks first, right? This is what we show here. And uh, so that helps fill the bucket for you know short and medium term expenses. Uh, and then we try to plug the others, and that helps you know fill in the buckets gradually. Obviously, income is something that keeps coming. Um, but, and so gradually things will normally flow, will be you know filling up if you have a positive, positive net cash flow. Um, but it could also slowly emptying if you are spending more than you earn, right? And so plugging those leaks allow you to increase your income or not, to increase your savings and hence fill up those buckets one by one. Um, uh, and then, yeah, I did mention that for me, but emergency fund should be before, you know, short to medium um, expenses. That is a choice, at least for sure it needs to be before you start investing. For the long term, right? Um, but um, um, so yeah, that that is sort of how I see this. Now you need to look at um, whether you have uh, leaks in those other buckets as well. Typically, the emergency fund wouldn't have leaks because it's a savings account, but there could be leaks in you know what you consider short and medium term expenses and maybe things you don't really need there uh, or not so important to you, and so you can plug those leaks as well. And then when it comes to investing, there are often very big leaks <laughs> which can be plugged. Uh, and so that's uh, that's what we do uh, here, right? Um, so one thing would be, you know, maybe you are investing through a bank, right? And they're charging a very high fee for a very simple service. And they're probably even putting your money in actively managed accounts of, of funds, which is a disaster because it, it both costs more and underperform the market in general. Uh, so these are examples of very big leaks because they will add up over time. So like this is an important concept because, as you know, when when you turn on the tap and you fill in something, to see if there's a gap, if there's a hole at the bottom, it will take a very very long time for that bucket to fill. Right? Uh, the so as soon as you plug it, the bucket's gonna fill super fast. Uh, the same happens with money. Um, we are we are being paid on a continuous basis. And somehow we make money continuously, um, and we're spending on multiple things. No. Uh, uh, and we don't realize the power of just cutting some expenses, plugging some some leaks, and repairing some leaks. Because uh, intuitively, it's difficult to see how you know saving fifty euros a month on something small will add up. Well, it actually quickly adds up to six hundred euros over a year, and that could be the start of an investment, right? Um, so small leaks can have a lot of effect, a very important effect over the long term. And so that's what, that's that's why this analogy is powerful because it's easier to see how plugging a leak, a water leak in a system like this can have a tremendous effect downstream. It's the same with money. Right, so that, that's, that's why this analogy is interesting. <laughs> so these are the money leaks. Uh, the question is like, where are your money leaks? And so um, I encourage you, if you're at the beginning of this journey to explore your expenses and think about what's really important to you, what you value most. And we talked about this yesterday as well, right? The values approach. Um, and focus on like optimizing those and you know minimizing expenses in other areas that might not be as important. Um, and then be smart about how you how you acquire the things you want, the things you want and the things you need. And, and then uh, we also talked about ways that we can increase our accelerate our path to financial independence yesterday, right? Um, and so one way of doing that is to increase the flow, right? That's how I call it. And that's basically finding ways to generate more income. Uh, whether it's with a side business, 
or you know getting paid more at the current work you do uh, or launching a business etc um this is super powerful because obviously increasing the flow everything's going to fill up much faster uh, and typically if you have everything all the intermediary buckets under control any increase in income will result in a massive increase in investment right so maybe you're earning 2000 euros a month and spending 1800 if you manage to increase your 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 income by 10% and say you go to 2200 all of a sudden instead of 200 going into your investment you have 400 so like a, a tiny change in your income can lead to a massive <laughs> increase in your in your in your investment um and lead to you know a much faster um much faster timeline or journey to towards financial independence so increasing income is super powerful another very powerful approach is to downsize the buckets and we talked about this yesterday as well which is cutting expenses right or reducing your living expenses which does two things one it increases how much you're saving right because if if you don't have to fill up all these buckets every month then that's money that goes that's basically money or water <laughs> that goes all the way to the to the to the to the investments and again it increases really rapidly your investments um, at the same time, it means that to sustain those ongoing expenses, you will need a smaller bucket um, of investment to reach financial independence, right? So, well, this is how this ties into what we talked about uh, yesterday. Um, don't need this <laughs> screen anymore. And um, uh, yeah, so this is my framework to look at expenses. Obviously, I am a big fan of pay yourself first. So whenever I used to get a paycheck, I would just transfer right away. Uh, I would know how much would go to my investment. So that is a very powerful way of doing this, um, especially if you're struggling at first. You know, allocate a certain amount to pay yourself first and put that into you know a bucket that goes into your investments. And then the rest is you know free budget. You do what you want, spend it the way you want, but you have a limit, and you know that. Um, so. I think that's a great strategy, but at the same time, understanding how your money flows and what is most important and how to, you know, prioritize how you spend and then identify where the leaks are and plugging them. And that is all very powerful. And finally, increasing your income, reducing the bucket size <laughs> and reaching financial providers uh, much faster. Right. So that's what I had to share with you today. I hope you liked it. I hope you like this kind of metaphors uh, where I'm trying to, you know, visualize things that are often very vague in our heads. And um, this uh, this analogy with water helps a lot when you think about personal finance. So I might do more of those um, in the future. We'll see. Anyway, let me know if you enjoy this, if you learned something. I hope you will go and look at your leaks. And then um, if you have any suggestions on ways I can improve this, I'd love to hear that because this is a framework I'd like to improve over time so that I can better explain this to other people and then uh, you know help improve their lives as well um, as I share this. Right, that's all for today. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and then uh, see you soon. Cheers.